to present our company and our collaboration with uh, IND uh, Group of Australia. Our uh, vision for the timber construction or for the, uh, this timber age that we are living is that uh, it's light, fast and green. Um, so our belief is that uh, timber should be produce also locally and not just transported over sea. Uh, and that was one of the reasons uh, that we start talking with, um, with Heine uh, so that we can share our knowledge but producing with local wood mm -hmm. in Australia. Um, well, most of your viewers will uh, know this this table and this uh, um, the carbon footprint of the different materials and it's visible uh, for anyone in the construction market that uh, timber will have a big advantage uh, facing concrete or steel um, so the carbon footprint of wood uh, is one of the reasons that the market is growing at the moment and uh, the, the wood uh, is a sustainable product that can be used uh, in most of the, the projects uh, for mid-rise buildings and large clear span uh, structures like our dome. Uh, but we, have, uh, we will introduce first some uh, reference projects with different type of structures and, and shapes and then we will present also the dome at the end of our uh, movie. Um, so Herring Group is over 140 years old, uh, more or less similar to, to Heine that is already uh, also close to 140 years old. Um, both companies are family-owned companies. In our case, uh, we are now with the family Herring on the fifth generation um, in the company and leading the company. Uh, in Europe, we have around 200 engineers and specialists, timber specialists uh, working for us. Uh, and we are based uh, in Europe with factories in Europe but we have partnerships and collaborations uh, in other countries. Just to show uh, uh, the management of uh, Herring and Aine, um, uh, on the right side at Herring, Christoph Herring is the fourth generation and actual chairman. The fifth generation, David Herring, is in charge of the, um, the commercial department is the head of sales uh, at uh, Switzerland uh, and gen um, the general manager of Herring um, AG, the, one of the timber construction companies from Herring, is Jürgen Felber. Um, Heine Group, I think Robert will uh, present uh, some information or Heine will uh, themselves will introduce, uh, but uh, we have been in talk and Chris uh, uh, was uh, with Peter Heim in, uh, in Australia when they established the agreement, the collaboration agreement that we have uh, for, all, for over a year now. Um, so coming to our production units, the production unit that you see on the top is ICON, and that's for timber construction elements uh, and all elements are done at the factory and uh, taken to the building site ready for assembly. There we have also the uh, management uh, service and engineering service are also on the same location. Uh, we have sales delegations in, in, in Zurich and uh, also a picture that you see below in Singapore and uh, an engineering office and uh, the 
management uh, of Heron Group in Mutants on the left side, on the bottom picture on the left side. Uh, over the years, we have received several awards um, recognizing our capacity for timber construction and innovating solutions uh, such as the dome or the mass timber construction that we received an award in 2015. Um, going on the production factories that we had, uh, I will show just the factory here in Switzerland, the, in Burgdorf. Um, this factory is for Glulam. Uh, we will we can show more uh, from our factory in China also, but uh, this factory in, in Burgdorf is one of the leading factories in Europe with a high efficient uh, and um, the integration between the, the software and the machinery is uh, um, on the highest level. So the, the, the Gulam is being produced according to what was designed. And the, for example, the hydraulic press where we make the shape of the buildings are out of the beams are done uh, directly importing the soft the cut design. So all most of the process are automatic, uh, supervised us for with a small crew, but um, a very high and efficient uh, production it's uh, what we have in in Burgdorf. and it's the way that we are able to to provide solutions in a very competitive market as the european market the factory itself is normally as as it would be expected um, certified for ce production um, so in this case it's a, a, a institute from France that uh, certifies our production. Also, the, the quality management is uh, SGS, so it's a, a well-known company uh, worldwide. And we have different certifications. I attach, in this case, um, the Korean standard as a reference uh, so that uh, we show different, uh, different countries and different locations. The business units from Heringage, some are more focused on the Swiss market, uh, in this case, Attico and the real estate development. But the timber uh, construction or engineering structures and timber structures and the dome can be used or be transferred to other countries. Uh, it's just the knowledge or the knowledge and part of the production. Um, and I will just give an overview of some of our projects uh, on the next slides um, and to, to explain that uh, our systems can be uh, produced in a way that you could transport it uh, across the sea, but ideally uh, you can also produce it all locally using local resources. Uh, we start the upper picture with the dome. In that case, we can go around 200 meters span, clear span. Um, that's the, the one of the efficient, most efficient uh, structures uh, due to the shape, due to the, the efficiency of the cross sections you can do a, a, a large clear span in a way that you can uh, transport it and you assemble easily or reassemble afterwards in another location. It's one of the advantage of the domes is that it's possible to reuse it in different places. Uh, we have uh, reference for military or defense facilities, train stations and uh, uh, large um, uh, uh, airports, also it's a possible structure for the wood. Um, the reference uh, in apartments and office. Uh, the single units uh, from McDonald's is also a, a reference from us. We have over 140 McDonald's in Switzerland. 
um, and then the sports and research centers. Uh, so it's a, a, a wide range of, of buildings that can be uh, produced or done with the timber structures. Um, in some cases, people don't have enough knowledge of wood. That's not uh, your case, or the, in, in Australia, wood is already being used for several years. Uh, but this picture is a good example of um, durability of a timber structure. Uh, in this case, it's a salt storage where uh, you have a uh, environment that is highly uh, corrosive uh, and uh, this this example shows that the timber structure in this case built in 64 is in perfect conditions after the over 50 years uh, if it, this would be a team, uh, steel structure you would have uh, uh, corrosion problems with the timber, you don't have this problem, and the maintenance that was done on this building is just limit to the external cladding or the, the roof cover. It's not uh, no need for maintenance on the interior and on the timber structure. So that's a, an example of a, a reference project from, from the, the 60s. Uh, but we have other experience and other projects uh, with a larger and clear span. In this case, uh, it's used for a timber, for a, a, a sports arena. Um, the, the, it's the main arena or main club for, for uh, ice hockey in Bern. And the span is over 90 meters. So the, the timber structure was done on by the end of the 60s. And uh, over the, the, the last 10 years, they asked us to, to review the, the structure and the design of the structure to verify if it would be according to the actual codes. Uh, we controlled the structure. Uh, uh, we can we have uh, checked uh, the roof materials and we have confirmed afterwards that uh, the design of the timber structure was uh, is still according to the actual codes is still valid and uh, the timber structure didn't have any maintenance uh, during this control um, and it can resist this for another 50 years without the much, much problem. Over the, the next is another example of uh, using a timber structure, uh, in this case on the outside for a bridge. The wood uh, is treated uh, for these conditions and uh, the building of the, the bridge is almost uh, 30 years old. And um, you see the, the picture was taken in July of the, the last year. So the conditions of the, the wood in this uh, exposed to the weather, uh, it's, it's in perfect conditions. If the design is done uh, to protect the, 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 the wood structure, uh, in this case, the, the treatment and the cladding that you have on the top of the beam is one of key factor to, to the long ability of the, the timber structure. Maybe maybe we should add, uh, Andrew, in this case, the wood was pressure treated. Yes. The, in this case, the, the, the treatment, when I mentioned treatment, is a, a, a deep impregnation that is applied on the wood. So it's increasing the, the resistance of the, the natural wood. In this case, it was large that was treated. Uh, examples of bridges done during last year. In this uh, particular bridge, we have a span uh, and uh, the use of a block beam uh, to, to make the deck uh, makes this bridge uh, more special. Um, in, in this uh, solution, we have a timber deck 
uh, and then a, a uh, sculpted layer on top for uh, for uh, for the, the protection of the bridge and for the water resistance. So the, the wood is underneath carrying the loads, but uh, uh, treated in a way that it's not um, exposed. And uh, the span between the columns are over 40 meters. Uh, this is uh, a nice shape and a wave that can be uh, demonstrating uh, the, the use of glue lamp structures, uh, the flexibility of the, the or the, um, the freedom of, of design that the glue lamp structure provides to the architect. It's shown on this project. This is the, the the train station in Bern, uh, and the wave comes from the lower deck uh, where the platform for the trains and uh, to the to the bridge deck that goes between the several platforms. So the wave covers the, this and protects the, the, the platforms. So it's a, a very interesting and showing the, the timber as a free uh, almost a free form structure. Uh, another solution in this case, it's a canary um, wharf in, in London. Um, the Crossrail station was designed by Foster and Partners, and we were invited to provide the timber engineering for this, uh, this design, um, design stage. Um, the shape is a grid structure over 300 meters uh, length um, and, and uh, the connections and this, the part of the, the roof is uh, open, the other part has an ATFE cover uh, and you see uh, segments of wood around 10 to 12 meters and connected with a steel element. Uh, to make the grid. So this is not uh, a, a continuous uh, shape. The building uh, is wider on the edges and narrow on the middle. And um, the part of the structure is exposed uh, because it's a botanic uh, garden on the, on the upper deck. And uh, the timber structure is, is open and, and uh, exposed to the weather uh, in London. Another project in the UK, this is what we can call really a free form uh, and the, sh the beams are double curve beams or curve in one direction and then twist it. Um, this is uh, Eden Project, the core building of Eden Project. Eden Project has this building as a, a welcome center and a presentation uh, conference uh, area. And then you see in the, the, this complex, Eden complex, you have the different biodomes that uh, were done previously to, to this building. This was the last building uh, from the, the Eden Project. Here, an example of a structure, the first structure um, built in China. It was our first experience in Asia. Um, this was done before the Olympic Games, and uh, it's a part of the, the training center that uh, the Chinese uh, Olympic Committee created um, to, to prepare their athletes. Uh, for the Olympics. Uh, the span here is over 30 meters. The beams were uh, all produced in Switzerland, but this was the first project that uh, came or um, we understood the advantage of producing locally and we have established uh, after this project uh, a partnership in China and we have uh, transferred the technology from Switzerland to China over 15 years ago, and we are producing in China 
for the Chinese market. We are producing the dual lumber in China. The latest project in China, um, it's a, a agro expo that will be opening their doors on the summer of this year. Uh, the largest clear span, uh, it's on the first building that we are producing, it's over 115 meters. The, the length of the arch goes over 145 meters and the height is around 40 meters. Um, this was a special project or is a special project because it's still in execution. But in this case, the full uh, glue lamp production is done by, by Switzerland. Uh, it was uh, a very challenging and demanding project in terms of uh, coordination and producing uh, the 3, 000, over 3,000 cubic meters of glue lamp uh, and transport it to, to China. So we have uh, weekly containers going from, from Switzerland to, to China. Uh, the first arches were transported uh, per aircraft, air cargo, uh, so that uh, the client could, have, uh, could see the, the first arches and uh, confirm the, the solutions uh, used. So we transported uh, over 75 meter cube per aircraft. Uh, this is roughly 38,000 uh, uh, kilos, 38 tons, and uh, it, it had to be done in less than four weeks. So uh, uh, it wouldn't be possible to, to prepare this in, in China. And uh, the client, uh, in this case, uh, was asking for a C certification, and this has to be produced in Europe and in our factories. The overall of this project is 75,000 square meters uh, in five buildings. We are building in, in 35,000 square meters. Uh, FlexFrame, you may know this solution from some projects in New Zealand. Um, this is uh, a version developed by us and uh, together with the ETH Zurich. Um, this is for mainly for, for earthquake uh, resistance, um, and it, but it's a, a Using a Google frame, that's how we um, think the best way to, to make a, a mass timber construction is combining CLT and the Google frame. And this, uh, this uh, flex frame is a base that is used. Uh, if you have earthquake, you need the post station cables. If you don't have earthquake risk in the area, you can have the Google frame with some bracing. Uh, and combine it uh, with uh, the decks in CLT or some walls in CLT uh, can be used. Uh, but this allows us to, to produce and here in Switzerland, we have now some projects going up to 90 meters uh, in the multi-story uh, apartment uh, in, in the center of, the, of Switzerland. And uh, coming to the dome, uh, here it's an example from the Sal Dome 2. This is over to 120 meters, the clear span. Um, the, the dome used uh, in this case is uh, 32 meters height. Uh, but uh, the, as I explained, the, the, the concept and the development that we have done uh, allows us to go wider. Uh, and I will show on the, over the next slides, I will show on, on our presentation uh, what was our first concepts for the dome, how we develop, uh, how we have been able to reach to this uh, higher uh, standard or higher uh, solution with the, the wider spans. Um, moving forward to the timber engineering, 
Uh, normally, we start on the projects. Uh, uh, ideally, is to come in when the architect and the client has their concept uh, created, so that we can uh, advise and guide the, the, the solutions to a more efficient uh, design, timber design. Uh, in the case of the, the Crossrail, uh, Foster had the 3D module created and uh, they needed uh, a, a specialist to design the timber structure to make it feasible in terms of uh, connections and feasible in terms of prices and uh, the, the make the building uh, feasible to be uh, constructed. Uh, in our case, we were invited by the client and by Foster to, to help on the engineering uh, as a consultant a specialist. Uh, what we do normally in this case, we make a first uh, feasibility check. Uh, if the, the client agrees with our successions and, and uh, if we are able to, to, to provide the, the, the solutions that the client is looking for, we can proceed with a, a, a study, a preliminary study. Uh, some of our solutions can be uh, the, our own design connections or the reinforcement of Kulam. It's one of our uh, alternatives. We are able to, to use carbon fiber to reinforce the, the Kulam and to increase the span or use different species of wood to, to, to have also a higher uh, strength class that would allow us to, to design a, a more efficient structure. Um, this is done normally on the preliminary st study. The going further on the design, we create or we define the overall cross section of the, the building, uh, of the beams used on the building. And uh, on a later stage, on the execution design, we provide also the detailed the connections that are required. And you see the example of the Eden project on the top image that is rotating and the connection used uh, there. Um, so this is a, a, a detailed design that we do uh, to make it feasible uh, to, to, to have the freeform uh, solutions that we use uh, or we can answer to our clients, um, both in terms of engineering and production. Uh, you see the picture below, it shows a twisted beam uh, used for Shigeruban. We were not the general contractor of this project, but we were one of, our, uh, of the suppliers of the Glulam beams with the, free, uh, with the twisted shape that you see on the pictures. Um, this uh, grid structure, you can have it uh, a roof cover of uh, glass, ETFE, potential membranes, every uh, wide ch uh, choices are, are available to combine the, the timber structure with the roof cover. Uh, another picture in this case from the construction of Eden. Here you can see also the roof deck uh, of the roof cover that is uh, was supplied by us uh, with the acoustic. Uh, you see the holes on the panels. So for acoustic reasons, uh, it was uh, designed like that. Uh, the structure, in this case, you can see better the curvature of the beams, the double curve uh, curvature of the beams. And uh, then the uh, final picture on the left, on the right side, bottom, uh, with the roof building finish and with the roof cover uh, applied. Some of the projects that we have on Southeast Asia in this, in this particular case, it's a three canopy in Singapore. Uh, we have been uh, involved on this project uh, from earlier stage as timber advisor. Uh, 
uh, and uh, this is now under under tendering for construction and this is using a timber structure with columns up to 25 meters and then the grid making uh, as a tree uh, shape for a glass roof. Uh, we are involved in other countries also as uh, technology transfer and uh, on the engineering part and but using local wood. Uh, this is an example from Bhutan. The Kingdom of Bhutan um, invite us to, to tender for this project and we end up advising them to, to uh, develop their own production of glulam using local resources. Uh, we have given them the, the knowledge to produce the glulam. We have transferred this knowledge. Um, our team was in, on site helping them to produce the first beams. Uh, we have done the engineering and uh, the, we have provided also the steel connections but they are producing uh, and building this, uh, this uh, Royal Academy using uh, their own glulam um, beams. Um, this is to be complete during this year. There were some delays over the last year because of COVID, uh, but things are still uh, moving forward and they will finish uh, this part of the construction during this year. The span is close to 30 meters, uh, and it's a very unique uh, building for 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 this uh, this location at the end. And on our advice or on our timber consulting service, this is one of the the examples uh, if for for China. Uh, our partner has his own sales team in China, but the engineering and uh, the support uh, to, to design is done by Switzerland and this was a train a subway station in Chengdu uh, it used also it's not yet built but it's a, a design study that we provide uh, with a, a European architect and this is uh, combining a triple arch like the Chengdu project for agro uh, it's uh, has some similarities between the two projects. Uh, it's an interesting solution uh, that allows us to go with the wider, uh, clear spans uh, on the market with this triple arch system. Uh, the example from the testing and the solutions developed for flex frame uh, together with ETH. Example of what can be done uh, and how efficient can be the production uh, with uh, all elements coming to the building site just in time, not not uh, uh, having uh, the construction on site uh, taking uh, so much uh, so so long as a, a concrete construction. This can be reduced uh, significantly with with the timber construction. Uh, and this is an example, a concept uh, use uh, for, for a flex frame. Uh, I have another picture of the buildings being done using the same system. In this case, it's a 10, uh, a 10 floor building combining uh, different uh, species of wood between columns and, and beams. Uh, here it's a combined uh, gulam frame with the, the CLT deck or a CLT concrete decks and uh, over 90 meters. This is to be built in Zug. Uh, we have been involved on the, on the, with the architect for the, the concept development and this is our proposal for that building. An example uh, of a, a mass timber construction done uh, in Basel 
uh, last year. Andrew, Andrew showed me bigger ones in Sydney. Yeah. <laughs> they they have uh, uh, more 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 uh, buildings than with uh, with mass timber in Australia. And coming to the dome, that's the overall view of the dome. You start from the concrete ring uh, on the foundation on the ground level. Uh, the use inside depends uh, by the, the client and the, the, the shape of the glue length X sphere. Uh, you can see here it's a the triangular uh, uh, shape. Uh, this is a geodesic dome. Uh, in, in our case, it's a grid of six. Uh, and then you have to cover uh, the, that can have different uh, cover materials. Uh, the, the, the design of the, the, the dome is done depending on the location. Uh, this means that we design the dome to be uh, the most efficient uh, logistic uh, solution. Uh, in Europe, you could go with the triangles uh, up to 70 meters. Uh, for uh, overseas uh, transport, we are limited to the container uh, length. So the 40 feet container means 12 meters uh, on the on the on the beams. Um, the original concept started on the 80s. Uh, in this case, the 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 examples that we have here. Uh, was the first buildings done uh, and the connections that were used at that time. Um, to the, to we started with the um, Papyrama and some exhibition halls. Papyrama is a, a permanent exhibition hall that is uh, near uh, the Lake of Geneva and uh, it's uh, over 40 meters uh, diameter. Uh, the cover is ETFE, and the picture that you see in the middle is one of the pictures from the, the building there. Uh, this was done in the middle of the 80s. Uh, at the same time there, then, uh, there were several exhibition domes uh, being done you know, all over Europe. Uh, and one of the main reference, let's say it like this, uh, is the picture on top. I have a, a picture, a better picture from the inside. Uh, in, it's a cathedral in, uh, in Italy. The, the dome concept, uh, we work in... A, um, we optimize the shape of the dome. Um, if it's for industrial purpose, the, the, we have to, to to know what you need on the height inside and how the, the material is storage inside. If it's for uh, uh, architectural uh, building, um, the shape of the dome uh, ideally is to, to, to have a ratio uh, between the ray details and the, the, the height of the dome. Um, we, we, by optimizing this ratio between the height and the, uh, the radius, we come to a, uh, the best uh, height combination and the most efficient solution. Normally, the height should be um, around two thirds maximum of the, the, of the, the radius. You can go almost to the to the the same radius and height, but that's more for a, a, a mosque or for a, a different uh, type of dome. Uh, in in our case, the most efficient solution would be around two thirds of the radius, and we optimize the the the, the, the length of the beams for the transport. We optimize the number of connections that we are using, uh, and we also uh, have in consideration the roof material and the roof cover. So if we uh, we have to to um, 
to compensate if the, we have a, a, a very efficient way to transport it with 17 meters, uh, the beams we need to compensate uh, also a part of the, the supporting structure for the roof cover. So it's a, a balance uh, that we have to, to, to be aware on the design uh, stage. But this is coming from, from, from the example you have on the top. It's what was done uh, 15 years ago uh, to, the, to the detail of the, the combinations, the possible combinations that we are using at the moment uh, to optimize the geometry and, and optimizing the, the visual, shape. visual impact. Yes. Here, some uh, of the pictures of the first stones. They mentioned uh, Papyurama on the left side. Uh, the roof cover, as I mentioned, is ETFT so that the, the light can go through. Uh, you could use uh, tension membranes uh, in, uh, of PVC or PTFE uh, that would allow also some light to go through. It depends on the what's the temperature inside, how you want to control uh, the environment inside and uh, or you can have a, a, a stiff cover uh, uh, instead of a membrane you can have also a deck covering the dome. Um, the examples on the right, it was for uh, exhibitions, uh, some in, in Switzerland, others in, uh, in the middle of the picture is in Birmingham. Uh, UK, uh, the bottom picture, I think it was uh, Israel at that time. Um, but uh, the, the shape and the, the fast uh, assembling is one of the, the advantage of the domes. Uh, if you look at the sections of the beams uh, on these pictures, and this is done on the 80s, uh, if you look at the, these cross sections use uh, and the spans that they are able to achieve uh, in the relation or the efficiency of the structure is shown by, by this, uh, this uh, narrow cross sections. Um, but uh, also visually you have a, a high, high finishing, uh, high quality and a visual uh, attractive building from the inside. Here the pictures are from the, the mentioned Varese Cathedral. Um, after 30 years, the, the building looks exactly the same without any damage, without any maintenance. Uh, the conditions of the interior is, is uh, in terms of acoustic, is uh, perfect uh, for, for a, a church. Uh, and this shows the, the potential or the freedom of design that the dome can provide uh, for, for different type of buildings. Um, after that first stage uh, of the dome uh, projects, uh, we were challenged to, to build a wider dome. In this case, it was uh, during the, the 2000, between 2003 and four, uh, The span here, it, it raised to 93 meters uh, and uh, the height 30 meters. And this was uh, uh, used for, for a salt storage. And this forced us to redesign and develop the connections to uh, um, achieve this wider uh, spans and this type of connections we call it uh, second generation connections in sphere connections uh, we test it uh, and we design it uh, internally and it's uh, our own concept uh, and can go up to, to 120 meters uh, clear span um, on the next step was the third generation when they asked us to build a second salt storage dome. And here we had to redesign again the connections and we come up with a new version of the N-Sphere connection that can go up to, to, to 100 meters clear span for the dome. 
uh, much higher. Uh, here you can see one of the advantage of the dome structures is that you can build it uh, without any scaffolding. So the geometry of the dome uh, helps also the, 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 the way it's, it's being assembled. So this makes it uh, faster to assemble and easier to assemble. You don't need uh, the scaffolding, you have a smaller crane, you have less people to do the assembly, so it's much faster on, on the construction. This is an example and you can see the size of the dome compared with the size of the persons inside and uh, the pile of salt inside also. Actually, one of the opening of the Saldon was uh, with the concert inside. Before they fill the, the dome with salt, they use it to, uh, to make some concerts in, in the interior. So the, the piles and the, all the storage, this is a, a combination and the shape of the dome is a combination um, that is uh, has to be done together with the client by knowing uh, the, what is the material and what is the, the, the stacker and the reclaiming system that they intend to use. We can optimize the shape of the dome uh, by making it wider than other solutions uh, and to make uh, the stockpile more efficient uh, and in higher capacity in the inside. An example of the dome finish, uh, the structure, and uh, the cladding being done. Uh, also, four sports. The, the natural shape of the dome uh, fits perfectly on uh, an arena. This can be for indoor sports, or can be combining uh, sports and culture. Uh, the layout of the interior can be used for uh, uh, the normal indoor sports like basketball, handball, uh, and volleyball, or can be also used for uh, athletic. Uh, so it's, it's possible to have wider, uh, wider spans. So in, this is an example of a 120 meter where you can have several uh, basketball and tennis courts and at the same time uh, you have the, the interior indoor uh, athletics uh, ever possible to, to, be, to be done. And the interior can have about 6,500 uh, uh, seats. Uh, if this goes up to 200 meters, you can have them a football stadium, a covered football stadium can be one option. So here it's a picture of the assembling process and how fast it can be done and the, the, the crew used to, to do the assembling work. And this is more or less what we have to, to present. We are open to any questions that you may have and we will try to, to, to answer it on the the best way you can. Uh, thank you, thank you all. And uh, now I just welcome welcome uh, Robert Mansell. Robert, can you just do a quick, please join us and uh, and uh, give a, a, a brief outline of yourself. Thanks, Andrew. Thanks very much. Yeah, so um, I hope everybody enjoyed that. Um, one of the things uh, with my role with Hein, and as I have mentioned, we've been operating for 134 years now, um, is being able to bring mass timber to the market uh, and represent Hine in that space. Uh, originally, I was working with Hine Timber as their business development manager for Blue Lamb Structures, um, and we've done some very exciting projects. But as architecture changes and the de desire to use timber changes, then of course the scale of those projects changes, and um, we seek to uh, find solutions for those for our clients and the marketplace in general. So. Um, Recently, or last year, I moved across to the XLAM team, which is part of the Iron Group. And my role there really is to help um, establish 
working relationships with um, other timber suppliers of all sorts, um, Glueland, Albiol and others, to help try and deliver a, a mass timber solution to the marketplace. And we saw Herring having the same form of structure that we did and certainly a, a wide arching um, set of skills that we could actually leverage from that. And as Chris Herring and Sergio mentioned, uh, it's not just about supply, it's about supporting us with engineering um, and technology. Um, but of course, if we need to, we can certainly call on them for some assistance. So we, we just want to help um, bring those projects to life and do it responsibly and effectively. So we're looking forward to doing more work in the future. Okay, Robert, we've got a few questions here. So uh, there's some of them you might be able to answer and some of them I may be able to answer. So if, if you want me to chime in, let me know. So the first one from Jerry. Uh, in these large dome structures, what form of fire protection is used? Um, with any timber being a combustible, we can look at using the uh, fire engineering. Um, the characteristics of the timber, we can calculate char, we can incorporate um, obviously sprinkler systems. Uh, but I would think in these buildings, we'd want to see the timber. So I think the idea would be to design that um, with the appropriate fire engineer to determine the correct um, beam size sections to achieve the actual structure. Yeah, and I'll just add to that, um, Robert, is that it's a, it's a single story building. So a single story building and it's a roof structure. So they don't actually need fire, fire resistance, but timber has an in, inherent and uh, fire resistance. The weakness in the, in the whole dome building will be the exposed connectors. So the, uh, uh, that one, so uh, another one from Jerry, could you please explain the second generation connectors and what is special about them? I'll probably just chime in and, and answer that one because uh, I've actually been into that, uh, into that uh, 120 meter, meter dome building in uh, store salt with one of the wood solutions to us. The, the reason why the second generation connectors is, the, is, an, is an insistence the, uh, the construction technique they're using. They're, traditionally, dome buildings, uh, timber dome buildings, use a prop at the uh, no point uh, for support. These connectors are now uh, designed so they uh, cantilevered, so that they so they can easily go together with just three three simple bolts, and uh, and they and a segment of the uh, triangle in the dome is cantilevered out, and and that makes it a really easy construction technique instead of relying on a pole for the support during the erection. So that's the change that occurred between the generation one dome to the generation two dome. Another question uh, is for you, Rob, how is the glass secured and any special connections? I'm not quite sure that it's related to that, but just an experience, your experience with connecting glazing to glue lamp. Yeah, so provided we can get the uh, profile of it in the glazing that we're after, it would be still affixed to uh, a aluminium, typically aluminium joinery section. Uh, um, so there would would be screw fixed directly to the top of those beams or inside the beam shell. It just really depends on that um, particular glazing system that you're using and those profiles will be available from those glazers. Uh, but simple, um, screw them and um, you can actually do them in a prefabricated set and screw them down and then apply the second set. So uh, it was a bit of work to do on each case, but a uh, fairly simple process with timber. Okay, Rob, a last question. This will be the last question for, for the webinar. Uh, could you just explain the double the cost of a double curvature versus single curvature versus a straight straight beam and glue lamp? Yeah, so cur double curvatures are generally formed from larger sections than in a curved section and then machined to the double curve. Uh, obviously, that then means your larger sections add more cost to the structure. So curving a glue lamp beam in the first instance is a secondary process, so therefore much adds cost, and then a double curve adds further cost but it is, um, and it generates additional waste. So double curvature uh, is simply made from a larger piece and machined to the appropriate shape. Yep, so the, that, and just to add a little bit more to that, obviously a straight beam is gonna be cheaper. The curving it is is going to increase the cost, but uh, by double curving, I mean, it has so much waste, it's a yep. almost an exponential growth in cost. Yep. The idea is the, and what Haring was saying, uh, Sajid was saying is that, yeah, have it have it designed so it does so it minimizes the uh, use of all of these expensive items and a lot of the times you can design, design a double curvature type structure into a single curvature and, uh, and it saves a lot of money yeah. so this point of time thank you rob we're now hit a midday midday and uh and so i'll just wrap up for the wrap up for that just a reminder about the cpd questions name one benefit of the timber dome building the 
products. You use timber, what mass timber product was often used in the timber dome? Glue lamps and those obvious answers there. And briefly describe how timber domes are erected. This is using the, just not a common there is using the cantilever, cantilever me method from the connector is really all that I'm looking for in answering that question. So the, remember that these recordings are available off the Wood Solutions website. Just um, you know, type webinar into the search sec section. The, and this, end, this brings to the end the timber building series for for uh, for us. And uh, uh, and I'd like to thank you for all the people who have listened to this series. And, uh, and our next uh, webinar will be uh, Wood Solutions on Tuesday seminar on the 2nd of March at the usual 11 a.m. spot. And this is going to be on the best practice for energy efficiency and health health buildings. And to be presented by Dr. Mark Drewsbury from University of Tasmania. Remember that we'll be sending out the CPD uh, certif 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 certificate as well as CPD questions. Again, please store those when you receive it. And uh, also a part of the CPD form is a, a, a survey question spot. Can you please take the time and, and, uh, and look at it? Thank you for that. And that point I'd like to now close the webinar off and say thank you. Thank you to all and see you at the next webinar.